traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to run over the stock market stuff here pretty quickly. You can see here I posted the E-mini uh, S&P chart showing you the strong support that we had at 4176 in the E-mini S&P. Also on the Dow Jones E-mini, uh, the fact that we were setting exactly at that uh, beautiful 61% retracement. Uh, we hit it twice. And actually, if you'll see what's happened today, because it was really interesting, as we hit it earlier in the day, you'll see uh, we ran all the way up to the uh, 382 retracement. Uh, and then all, of course, uh, this is a daily chart. And what happens is it comes down and when hey, we're going to be blasting through this upside uh, chart here pretty quickly because it looks like it's going to be going a lot higher. I'm not sure how much higher this is going to go but <clears throat> excuse me on the on the e-mini S&P we're sitting right at the 78 percent level and you'll notice that the importance of this is the fact that when these ratios fail in other words they move from you know going through the 382 they just go and look at the strength of this that we've had here folks you can see the there's your ABCD down okay there's the day and a half correction Guess what that is, folks? That's a 78% retracement right there. And then now we're right at the 78% retracement on the upside. Now, I, I do a lot of work with technical analysis. I don't understand the fundamentals of stocks. Uh, I, I know the only thing I know less about than stocks is politics. And so <laughs> anyway, I want to I want to show you a statistic that just absolutely blew me away when when I saw this. I, I sent it the other day. But somebody else sent it in a different format and showed me what's happening to the stock market. All right. Now, this is the uh, in, it's an indication of the eight stocks that are out there. Remember, it's, remember, we, we, we showed that stock that showed the 493 stocks in the S&P 500, except for the seven. Well, the seven that they're looking at here, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, NVIDIA. Meta and Tesla, those seven stocks, okay, have a bigger market cap than the energy complex, the metals complex, the industrials complex, and the financial sector complex combined. Folks, this is not good. I can tell you that right now. I don't know what's going to happen, but here is my two cents worth. And believe me, if you pay more than two cents, you've overpaid. But here is the same chart that we looked at, and I'm doing work on this right now because I see a beautiful three drive to a top pattern in this. And um, remember now, this is the S&P uh, S&P 7. Instead of the S&P 500, this is the S&P uh, 7. In other words, it takes out the 493 others that are in there. So that just shows you the strength of those things. Yes, I know that AI is the greatest thing since sliced bread. But we had another baker trying to tell us the same stuff two and a half years ago, and that was how wonderful negative interest rates were going to be for our economy. And that didn't work out too well. Anyway, you can see the A, B, C, D there. Now, I don't know if – I look at patterns, folks, and I'm very skeptical when I hear stuff. I guess I'm, a, uh, I'm not – you know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a, a natural cynic. But I'm, I'm, whenever I hear someone that tells me it's too good to be true, you know, grandma told me and chances are it probably is. So anyway, you can see the big ABCD patterns here. Now, I'm not saying this is a top. I'm not – maybe it could be. I don't know. Uh, all I'm going to be doing is watching it. Okay, that's all I'm doing. So 
Here's here's what I was watching today. Because NVIDIA is in the news, all I'm doing again is I went up, and I, I rely on these numbers that I look at. And so I go up, I take a look at this. Here's NVIDIA. You'll see they had that big move up here. Look at the, we had a beautiful, a, there's your 382 retracement right here yesterday. Boom, down to the ABCD pattern today. And look where we went today so far. We rallied up to the 382. Now, we can exceed these levels without any trouble at all. We know that. But all I'm doing is I'm just watching those. And you know why that I'm watching them? Because sometimes they work. And since you want to remember uh, the all the president's men, uh, I think that, yeah, that was with Woodward and Bernstein, right? But let's take a look at the big one, where the money is. This is the euro. This is 53% of the U.S. dollar index, folks. This is the big daddy rabbit. And we talked about this yesterday, and we sent a special video out on it uh, last night. And there was the 78% level right there to the tick. And so all we do is we go down, going using the same thing with technical analysis, we go down and we go to a smaller time frame. This happens to be 15 minutes, so we can see how the thing is unfolding. But as you look at this, you're going to see some technical things that are very, very interesting. First of all, if you look at this really dark line right here, this black line, that is a head and shoulders pattern. There's your left shoulder, there's your head, there's your right shoulder coming in right here at the 61% retracement. And not only that, but look, the market exploded to the upside here. And look at the pullback. You see that little tiny pullback right there? Yes, Johnny, it is a 382. And as you can see, we continue to go higher. This is a big deal, folks. This means the U.S. dollar is weakening. And if that's, that means we got up to that, 10, that magical 104 and change level, and that means that something big is probably going to be happening you know, to the gold market because it usually runs contra to what that does. So what we were watching for, of course, is to see what was going to happen with this uh, gold. And so what we were watching for is a place to get short up around 1193 level. We'll get this up here. You're going to see the 382 retracement right up here. Now, it went a little bit higher. It got up to 2000 and now it's reversed and started to come back. So all I was doing was just looking at, remember we bought this right here. This is, actually we bought it right there on that 382 retracement and took $27 out of it. And now we're in on the short side. But that's all I'm doing is looking at the patterns. I'm not listening to the news. Don't care about the news. And you know what? The news doesn't care about me. Frankly, folks, I don't know if I can make another 18 months of this uh, uh, politician stuff because I know it's how, what people watch and it's a multi-billion dollar business, but shut the front door. Boy, I really don't like it. I mean, I just, uh, you can always, like, what's well, the old joke by, I forget, it was Henny Youngman said, you can always tell when a politician is lying because his lips are moving. So I don't know whether that's the case or not. All I am, folks, is I'm a technician. I look at some of these things and it tells me whether I think they're going to be good or not. And if they're not good, I move on to the next one. You remember yesterday, we were looking at, at the possibility of a good move in platinum. And boy, did we get a good move in platinum. Anyway, we're going to take a little break here. I guess at the break is Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter. So let's uh, stay tuned. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. Okay, we're back, folks. Uh, uh, Stan will be our guest here in just a few minutes. And a news just came across Bloomberg that France has banned short haul domestic flights. It didn't say how short it was going to be, but uh, I don't know what that's going to do. But boy, they're really clamping down. The old government over there is really making it difficult to uh, move around, I guess. And that's not always a good thing. That Brexit thing never really worked out very well for a lot of people. I posted a chart of the crude oil, folks. You can see we were down here for two full days between the 30th and the 31st. And then today, the 61% retracement there at 67.75 held, and we've rallied $3 a barrel. Uh, we were mentioning that uh, the other day, of course, and it finally took a move to the upside. The other one that was really interesting uh, today, I wanted, there's two of them that I really need to cover. Uh, this was the natural gas. Remember, we had the big move down in natural gas, and that all that did was it set up another move uh, that would take natural gas down to the uh, 215 level, and that was so far the low has been 21470. And uh, that's pretty much it. So evidently, any flight that's less than two and a half hours, they're going to stop that. That's not going to be very good for the airlines. Oh, boy, who knows what's going to happen. Well, that's one of the reasons why I don't live in France. Uh, the other reasons are too numerous to mention. Uh, hold on one second here. But you can see the natural gas had a pretty nice move. Folks, uh, when I look at these charts uh, all the time, I, I sometimes run into some of them that, uh-oh, it says something really big is happening. And I mentioned this uh, on the show on Tuesday, and uh, I wanted to bring it up, and that was in the wheat market. And uh, I have done a considerable amount of uh, work on the wheat over the last few days, putting it into our video for the folks at 24-7 and trade what you see. But this is December um, wheat going back uh, for well over a year. And you can see the big ABCD pattern. There's your 382 retracement here. Remember this when we were at 13 bucks. Now we're at five dollars. 
uh, actually December wheat, which is the you know the the uh, winter wheat, uh, had a, uh, a thing at six dollars, and uh, 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 not six dollars and ten cents, and the low uh, yesterday was six dollars and ten cents, and I said to the folks uh, yesterday, uh, in the early evening, uh, I said what we'll do is we want to buy that first 382 retracement and but the probably should let's wait a day before we decide to do that and uh, and if you wanted to see where you made a mistake I have to bring this up to show it to you I said wait one day now you can see what happened on that day is there it was it came right down to the 382 retracement half a cent below it and then rallied 36 cents, which is uh, $1,800. So that's a, uh, those are the kind you make some mistakes along the way. But this is telling me that there's something really big happening uh, in the wheat market. Now, it's been coming down for a long time. This is a major ABCD. And if you did the time counts that we did, if you, in other words, count the number of weeks down, measured the ABCD swings between A and B and C and D to see how the relationship between C and D matches up with A and B and the slope of the line, which tells you the, you know, the strength of the downtrend, then that's what really tells us that that's – and it hits the exact number. Are you kidding me? You can't make that up. And so that's why we're watching it so very, very closely. It's going to be, it's going to be a, a really, really big one. Okay, now I wanted to get back to the Dow Jones. Someone had another question about it here. Uh, this is what we were looking at uh, yesterday. And I wanted to bring this up because you'll see this is why we came down today earlier from that 382. Okay, uh, we came down to that 382 and then we had the, the really – uh, the startling move to the upside, which was not unexpected because we had that big daily, you know, Gartley in the in the uh, Dow Jones. I mean, you you have to respect the Gartleys. I mean, my goodness, the guy he had a tremendous book that uh, was very very important, and he said that was the most important pattern of all. He spent two pages, two twenty one and two twenty two, describing this particular pattern. And so, how high is it going to go? Well, the first. Part, we've made the 382. We have not taken out that second 382 yet, so that's still a little bit negative, but not a whole lot. So that's the thing that I'm uh, paying very, very close attention to. The main thing from today's thing that we have to pay attention to is this one, folks. And this, this, this bear market right here that we've been really bearish on for a long time, and we, we got bullish last night, and uh, there is that downtrend is finally shattered in the uh, euro it is just really well I've already posted but I want to post it again because it's that important and you can see we moved uh, you know well over 140 points that's a $1,400 move in one day in the euro and that that's a that's a big move folks because that takes a lot of money because that's uh, this thing trades a trillion dollars a day so even the US uh, the the central banks and stuff, they can play with it for a little while, but they can't play, you know, they can't play games with it like they can, you know, thin stocks and stuff like that. It's just not going to happen. How high is this going to go? No one knows. For a fact, we don't really know that. Just like you, you remember, I can remember Mark Douglas sitting right here in this office with me, and he puts his hand on my shoulder. He says, "The one thing I can absolutely guarantee," and I says, "What's that?" And he says, "We don't know what's going to happen next." And I said, "You're absolutely correct." And he said, "That's why this business is so great because you don't know what's going to happen next. You have a pretty good idea, and you can bet on or make a you know a, a strategic investment." Or a bet, if you want to call it that, but you don't know for sure. That's why you got to always be protecting your backside. So that's uh, that's the main thing. The hardest part is when you're a technician is not to listen to what's happening in the news because the news will get you so messed up uh, that it'll just literally, uh, you know. The, the, in fact, it, I can give you a perfect example. When I did that wheat, I could see what was happening, and the news was yeah, China was dumping everything. I didn't care what China was doing. I wanted to see what prices were doing. And the, that wheat market was the one that told us that, yep, that was it. The soybeans, uh, we ended up taking I, – I, I had a stop in, and it got filled two cents uh, below our stop. We got filled. It went two cents lower and then rallied uh, 50 cents. So 
that happens. So I've got to reevaluate, and I'll find a nice place to get in. And I've been bearish the euro, and I turned around and be bullish euro. I'm going to be the same thing with the uh, with the grains. And boy, this is going to be a big one, folks, because this puppy is flat out oversold. If we can go from thirteen dollars to six dollars in wheat, we can go back. Because what uh, the only way up. It means the only way is down because what goes up must come down and vice versa. And this market is incredibly oversold. Just the 382 retracement on the on the wheat would be worth $7,500. So let's uh, I'll be watching that one very very closely because it's uh, it's uh, one of the staples, uh, you know, flour, wheat, all that bread, all that stuff. So it's uh, pasta. Hello, operator. Where are the people in Italy? Anyway, that's what we're going to be looking at pretty soon. We're going to have uh, Stan Harley on. Always interesting to uh, the things that he's going to be showing us. So we'll be right back. 877-927-6648. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter in the house. Stan, how are you doing? Hello, Larry. I'm doing just awesome. Yeah, listen, Stan, uh, you, I'm sure you remember and had some contact with uh, Bill O'Neill when we were at KWHY there 
uh, in Los Angeles. But did you get to know him very well? I, I did not know him, no. Mm -hmm. Well, I was lucky because he was dating with my daughter, and his, one of his he wasn't, but one of my kid, one of his kids was. His youngest son was dating my daughter, but uh, he was a really a class act, and uh, I got to know he, him and Ed Hart quite a bit. And uh, but uh, boy, I tell you, he he was a really a nice guy, and I I can't imagine uh, how big that funeral is going to be because uh, he really helped a lot of people along the way, and uh, you know he out he out. Uh, he took uh, o o leadership over the Wall Street Journal, which was one of his, uh, one of the things that he always wanted to do. So he did that. But he, he was a really nice guy. Anyway, listen, tell us what you're looking at today. You've been bullish. How much higher are we going? Are we going to hit 50,000 in the Dow? Well, uh, we'll sh we shall see here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I know uh, you are uh, less than, shall we say, positive on the market. Um, oh, oh, I'm not as bearish as I was. No, no, no. When I see the the Nasdaq gap up 200 points on Sunday, I said, "Uh oh, I, I have uh, I traded both sides, of course, since that time." And but anyway, because I'm a short term uh, trader, because I don't like to get involved with these seven and eight day moves. But Stan, this is your show. Please tell us what you're looking at because people really wait to see what you're doing. So please go ahead. Ab absolutely, uh, Larry. Uh, I have a bullish perspective on the markets, uh, as you know from our, our, mm -hmm. our many interviews uh, over the last several months, and I still do. Um, I thought I'd show a few things to the viewers here to kind of give credence to why I am bullish, and then, of course, they can make their own decision at the end of the day. Um, I thought we'd start out with looking by looking at uh, the unemployment data, which you would think okay. has nothing to do with the stock market, but actually it does. Um, this uh, data is reported once every month uh, by the uh, federal government. The Bureau of Labor Statistics, the BLS, compiles this data. And of course, all the financial networks show it when it comes out. Um, but here's the, here is a graph of the data all the way back to the inception in, uh, in 1948. Uh, and each of these red squares on my graph represent each of those data points. Now, what I have done is I have inverted the data so that it looks more like a stock chart, which you and I and the viewers are more familiar with. So when unemployment is getting worse, the dots are going down. And when unemployment is getting less and less, i.e. the economy is in an expansion environment, the dots are going up. So it just it helps me because I have a backwards mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, you're, a, you're an engineer, so you're a scientific So can you mind. make any sense of that? Well, some people can, some people can't. But, but, you know, I'm a big fan of Lucas and Fibonacci and all of those things. So what I've done is I've taken the same data and put a lot of numbers and dates on here. And this is kind of a, a busy chart. And I'll leave it up here for a, a minute or two uh, and, and discuss it. But uh, what I've done here across uh, the top and the bottom of the significant inflection points is I've marked the dates. And in the recent past, we had a high, in other words, a low in unemployment, uh, but a high in February of 2020, another one in March of 2007, another one in April of 2000, and so on. And then I have marked the lows across the bottom of the screen. And curiously, there's about a 129 month cycle in the pattern across uh, the lows. Um, that has done a dandy of a job in, uh, in defining the structure. Uh, what is equally, if not more interesting, is the fact that Fibonacci, but more importantly, Lucas numbers, which as you know, I'm a big fan of, uh, when I count Lucas numbers in months from uh, the, the major pivot points in the recent past, uh, they all line up with a future pivot point. And I do this all the time. Uh, and right now, and looking at the last several pivotal highs and pivotal lows, uh, counting forward in time Lucas numbers and their multiples, I get a clustering between September of 2023 and January of 2024. So that's about you know six uh, to eight months from now. Uh, that suggests that's where unemployment would, should read its, its best level. Now, why is that important to you and me and everyone else who trades the stock market? Well, let's look at the last two highs in this indicator. 
uh, March of 07 and April of 2000. And let's think for a minute about where the stock market had peaked during that then current economic time frame. March of 07, we had a stock market peak in October of 07, seven months later. Prior to that, unemployment reached its best level in April of 2000. The stock market cyclical high occurred in September of 2000. That's where the New York composite topped out. Uh, so, and I've followed this through a number of cycles. The point being, is, oh, and, and then the more recent one, February of 2020, of course, the stock market part topped in February of 2020. So the takeaway here is that unemployment is a very good leading indicator for the stock market. It typically gets to its best level somewhere between zero and nine months, with about six to seven months being the most common later. So let's say unemployment reaches its best level in September of 2023, somewhere between zero and seven, eight months later, uh, the stock market should reach an important cyclical high. Well, we haven't gotten to September of 2023 yet. So history would suggest a stock market peak of importance is yet to come. Mm -hmm. That's the takeaway. Uh, Stan, in your area, are the restaurants packed? Because, boy, Tucson and all of Arizona, I mean, you just have to wait unless you eat at 4 o'clock. I mean, they're just, they're just packed, even the bad ones. Um, interesting point. Yeah. Um, yeah, the economy is doing well. Unemployment yeah, it is. I is don't see a recession percent. anywhere. You know. is it's, <laughs> it is as good as it's been in many, yeah. many years. I think only one time it's been higher, and that was the peak we had back in uh, – 1953, yeah. So we're at the same level we were now in about May of 1969. Um, and the only time it's been any higher was June of 53. Yo, so to your point, the restaurants being packed in Tucson, they're packed everywhere. I was at a restaurant last night. Uh, the economy is booming. Of course, it's yep. being run on borrowed trillions of borrowed government money, but that's an issue for another day. <laughs> sure, that's for sure. The fact is, the, the economy is booming. And my analysis would suggest the economy is going to peak out later this year. And then shortly thereafter, the stock market should reach a major cyclical high. Now, when I say cyclical high, I don't mean all the major indices and all the major stocks hit an important peak. For example, April 2000. Remember back then? The Dow peaked in January of that year. The NAS and S&P peaked in March. The final index among what I call the big five components peaked out in September, and that was a New York composite. That was the yeah. orthodox cyclical top by Stan Harley's measurement. And hey, that's Stan what I'm Harley. expecting in the current environment. Stay with um, us. We want to have you back for I'm just another for segment. I'm important stock market high um, probably in January. Okay, so stay with us. That's, that gives us another, what, seven months, eight months. Um, uh, and I think it will be characterized by a fewer number of stocks and a fewer number of the major indices reaching new highs as compared to a January of 2022. So you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. 
These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hey folks, we're back with Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter, and you got one of my favorite subjects up there, the old SPX with the right translation. Yes, Larry, here's a, another chart that I thought would help us out a lot. This is a, a chart of the S&P 500 that I ran off a little bit before our interview. Um, this goes back uh, a little over a year's time, and I've noted with the blue lines, the crests or the trading cycle highs in the, uh, in the trading cycle pattern. And uh, with red vertical lines across the bottom, I've noted the troughs. And then uh, I've labeled the pattern uh, one, two, three, four to denote the, uh, the, the trading cycle count within the, uh, what I call the weekly primary cycle, which is somewhere between 21 to 34 weeks. Uh, this most recent one spanned 21 weeks uh, from the October low to the mid-March low. It's normally, normally, I use that in italics, about 34 weeks. But sometimes it contracts to 0.618 Fibonacci to 21 weeks. Sometimes it expands to 55 to plus 1.618. But most commonly, it's around 34. Um, and then the, the trading count has been 49, 53, 51. Um, what's interesting is the trading cycle lows have been spread out over time, over several trading days. So, for example, uh, most recently, the... Uh, the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 uh, bottomed on the 24th of May. Um, the Dow bottomed the next day, day later on the 25th. And the New York Composite, I believe, bottomed yesterday. So sometimes sometimes with lows, everything just, you get a spike bottom. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. It did that most recently. It did the same thing back at the December lows. It, uh, the lows are spread across about a week, week into a half, week and a half. And it did the same thing at the March bottom. And then last but not least, I've, uh, I've noted the incidence of left and right translation on the chart. Uh, all the way down to the October lows, the crests or the high points of the trading cycle occurred to the left of the midpoint of that cycle. That's called left translation because the high occurs to the left of the midpoint. And that is characteristic of a declining market environment. And then lo and behold, from the October bottom, Boom, somebody flipped a switch. And the trading cycle highs have been occurring to the right of the center line of the, uh, of the trading cycle. And I've put the, the letters RT to indicate right translation. And right translation is indicative of a rising market environment. And oh my gosh, we had uh, uh, most recently, uh, we had only what, two or three day, days down basis the S&P 500. So definitely right translation for sure. Even if you use the New York, New York composites low uh, of yesterday, you still have right translation. Bottom line is market's going higher. That's what we're doing now. We're up nicely today. Um, of course, all eyes are focused on uh, the shenanigans in, uh, in, in the Beltway. Um, 
watching to see what uh, our congressional leaders are going to do with the uh, the debt ceiling. I wish they didn't call it that. I wish they called it debt reduction, but I'd probably <laughs> never, never get elected. Yeah, that won't happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hey, let's look at one more thing. This is some, shh, don't tell anybody, Larry. <laughs> but guess what? The big three European indices have made all-time record highs here just recently. Uh, sure look at have, the United yes. Kingdom FTSE. Look at, the, look at France's CAC 40. Look at the German DAX. All three record high ground here just recently. Yep. Well, and <sighs> astoundingly, I hear nothing mentioned on, on this network or any of the other commercial networks. Uh, or by really any other technicians, which I just scratched my head on that one. Uh, but what's the takeaway? Well, over the long haul, uh, the big three European markets and the American markets tend to move together. They make their really important pivotal highs and pivotal lows right together. Sometimes there's this lead lag uh, along the way, which is what we've been seeing here of late. But with the big three and record high ground, that's just another, uh, another uh, indicator to me that supports the bullish thesis so it says we're going higher well uh, Stan I've got a question uh, do you, you know I watch these uh, spectacular move in AI stocks like a Broadcom and uh, well see Broadcom and then Nvidia and Amazon and meta uh, I, you know I don't know anything about AI other than it means artificial intelligence but when you see spectacular, uh, moves like this, or you know, stock moves, uh, you know, three hundred dollar stock moves ninety points in one day. Do, do you have any work uh, that, that you know historically that means something, or you know, because people ask me and I say, hey, it's just four or five stocks. You can't make a case for four or five stocks. So I I, I didn't know how to answer that question. Larry, a great question, and I I wish I had some insightful thing to say about that, but but no, I don't, other than uh, it, it's just indicative of a, a bull market that remains intact. Um, we've certainly seen that in years past. You typically don't get those types of things in a bear market. So um, I think this bull is not over with yet. Um, I'm looking for a final cyclical high, uh, probably in January. Um, I'll refine that as we go along here or withdraw it as we go along. But that's my working okay. thesis at this time. And I do not expect new highs in the Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, New York Comp Down Transports. No. But could we possibly get uh, a token new high in one of those? I think that's very, very plausible. Which among them will be is a little too early to say. Um, earlier in this run up from the October lows, the Dow was the leader. Um, just a month ago, the Dow had uh, retraced 60% of its January to October decline. Uh, the S&P, the NAS, the New York Comp, less than 50%. But now we've seen a flip around. Uh, in the last 30 days, the Dow has weakened relatively, and the other indices, particularly the NASDAQ, have just been on fire. So um, uh, yeah, I don't think the bull market's dead for all the reasons I've described here. And no, you've so what you're on. seeing in those types of stocks, I think is, is just classic, uh, bull market behavior suggestive that there's there's more to go on this thing well you've certainly been consistent with your analysis and it's been right you want to talk about the precious metals for a second let's talk about one more uh one more area larry um okay. uh, i'm not a big fan of the metals complex here i think we are in an area of topping and i'll show some i'll show again a, a longer term cycle that i've done some work with that you and i've talked about in the past um but we are very, very late cycle. Uh, my work suggests there's about a, a 94 month cycle. That's just a couple of months shy of eight years. And we are now seven and a half years into the eight month cycle. So to see, to expect to see much more upside from here is, uh, is really betting on uh, a lot, I would say. Uh, if we didn't see the top uh, a month ago, I'd be surprised. I couldn't couldn't discount one more push to modestly newer high in the gold complex. But uh, um, I, I think this is very, very late cycle in the metals complex. And uh, it would be smart to just stand aside on this, this one. If it's going to go a little higher, fine, let it go. But I think uh, we should be focused more on a low that I see coming about a year from now. Uh, the silver market, 
uh, is struggling to stay above the 25 level. It just can't seem to do it. It gets up there for a few days and then falls back down again. So to me, to my eye, uh, this is suggestive of a market that's just about done with the current cycle. Um, and last but certainly not least, here's what I was talking about a moment ago. This is uh, gold going back um, many, many years. We've got very clear evidence of the 94 month cycle. Every trough of importance has occurred at 94 months. Hey, listen. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, we're back with Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter, and he was kind enough to talk to us about silver and gold. And I'm sure do you probably watch copper, don't you, uh, Stan, as it still looks quite bullish, actually, uh, on the longer term charts. Am I correct? Uh, Larry, I haven't taken a look at copper, so I'm not able to speak. Okay. And uh, I had a volume glitch a moment ago, so I didn't hear the I didn't hear the commercial coming. So I kept on talking. My apologies. I got that. Why don't you, now. I was hoping you would finish that part about the gold market <laughs> because that was very, very good. Please. Why don't it, we finish it was that right a, now? Uh, error on my part here on the on the, clicking the right button here. Got that fixed. But um, yeah, I'm not sure how much came through. Uh, let me just go back to the uh, the prior chart with the silver, and uh, and point out that silver is struggling to stay above the 25 level. It uh, gets up there and then falls right back down again. And to me, this is just indicative of late cycle behavior. Uh, and then of course the gold complex as you can see on this chart, um, 
clear evidence of a cycle spanning 94 months, uh, going back, oh my gosh, to uh, 1970. So you've got 53 years of data here. Every low, every single one uh, has occurred at 94 months, plus or minus eight months, trough to trough. So when I dump all of the dates into a spreadsheet, do what's called a regression analysis, which finds the best mathematical fit to the data series, then I project forward in time. It says uh, we should be looking towards May 2024, i.e. a year from now, just under a year from now, for the next low point in the metals complex. We're seven and a half years into a nominal eight year cycle. So betting on much further upside here, I think is really rolling the dice. Um, uh, your question about copper, I haven't done the analysis, so I'm not, I'm not qualified to speak on copper. Well, that's okay. You're qualified on just about the things that they're interested in here, that's for sure. Hey, listen, we'll have you on again soon, so be safe and stay on the green side of the grass, my friend. You're a class act. Well, thank you, sir. Okay. You bet. Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter, folks. We'll have him back soon. See you tomorrow.